Hello friends, welcome to this video. Today, as you probably already know from the title, I'm going to be talking about how to make professional grade art prints when you don't have a printer, or you don't have a very good printer, which is the case that I'm in. I think a lot of artists at some point in our art journeys think about making art prints. I mean, it's like kind of one of the most classic ways to make money from your art. Or at the very least, it's usually nice to have physical prints for friends and family. But especially if you're just starting out, the idea of spending like $300 at the extremely low end for a printer that can make the art prints that you want is, it's, it's a bit daunting. Anyway, I'm here to tell you that there are other ways to make professional grade art prints rather than spending a bunch of money on a professional grade printer. Although I must say, in the long run, that would be your cheapest option. But if you're just starting out, or if you want to sell a little bit to make money to buy the printer, then you can use the methods I'm going to talk about. So my story with this is, I mean, obviously, like many artists, I've always thought of having prints to like sell to people. So I was kind of looking into this already, but the main reason why I kind of went on this journey and did this is because I wanted to make a gift for my grandma for her birthday. I know that she would just love a physical art print of something that I made for her, so... I started exploring my options. So overall, there are a few different ways to get art prints when you don't have a printer. One very popular way is to use like a print-on-demand service like Redbubble or InPrint. Another way is to order from an online print shop. And then a third, which would mainly just be if you intended to sell your prints, is to use a dropshipping service, such as Printful. It's like a printing service that integrates with platforms like Shopify and Etsy and all that stuff. Print-on-demand services like Redbubble or InPrint don't cost any money up front. You just put a design on the website and people can buy it. Although InPrint comes with a brief application process, you just upload a couple of your artworks and artists in the community can approve you. I actually signed up for an imprint artist account and I got approved in like 12 hours and I will show you the designs that I put up for people to judge. Here they are. You can only upload three pieces, which is really nerve-wracking, but I just went for it and it worked out. Redbubble has no application or anything. You just upload designs. There's no approval or anything, although you do need to upload five artworks in order to start your shop. I was I was a little slow on the uptake for that one and I had like one design to see if it worked and then I was like, huh, it didn't work. Um, so yeah, maybe pay attention and read what the screen says when you're doing that. So with these two services, uh, they don't charge you anything. They just take a cut of your sale when they sell one of your artworks, but things like Etsy and Shopify and stuff, like, you have to pay to use that. I think Shopify is, like, $29 a month, and then Etsy is, like, you have a 20 cent listing fee for every single product. So, like, if I was to sell five art prints, I would be charged 20 cents five times. Like, even if it's under one name, every single thing you sell is, like, a 20 cent charge plus a percent plus inventory if you're not using a drop shipping service a drop shipping service like printful basically makes your product and then sends it directly to the buyer so in a normal online shop you would order inventory and then you would send it to the buyer but the drop shipper will make it for you and then send it to the buyer of course for a percentage of your sale it it really all adds up but in the end, the cut taken by Etsy plus your dropshipper or by Shopify plus your dropshipper, it's less than the cut that a service like Redbubble or InPrint would take. 
Now I'm going to show you how online print shops work. This is how you would order inventory if you wanted an online shop and didn't want to do drop shipping. This is also how lots of artists can make prints for conventions. Basically ordering your art prints this way is a lot cheaper than ordering them off of like straight off of Redbubble. Anyway, this website is called Catprint. It's really easy to use. All you do is hit upload your design and then you upload your design. Now I would say you should go local before you try an online print shop. It would probably be a lot cheaper, but I live in a small town and there's nothing like it even close. Anyway, we're going to add our file to the job and then we have to pick size and do some cropping. Well, not cropping, just stretching. It's really important for you to know the aspect ratio of your art piece. And honestly, it's really interesting, but paper stock of specific sizes, like normal print sizes, is a lot cheaper than like other sizes for some reason. This is all to say that if you can, crop your art to a regular or common aspect ratio before you try to make prints of it because it's cheaper that way and we like to save money. Anyway, the next step is to line up the corners of your artwork with the corners of Cat Print's little box. This is to make sure that the margins are all straight and nice and even and perfect. And then also if you wanted full bleed, like you didn't want any white margins on your print, this is where you would kind of handle that. So they actually have a little tutorial thing on their website that helps you figure out how to set up your file. And then they also have one that explains the bleed and where you should stretch your art to if you want full bleed. To me, it mostly makes sense. I just went with no bleed because that's a little bit easier. But with this service, you have a free hard copy print that you can get sent to your house and approve. And they can also send you a digital proof, basically. So that would help you figure out if your bleed settings are up to standard and all that stuff. And they also have some file setup templates. Okay, detour done. <laughs> Back to file setup. After lining up the corners of my artwork with their little guide, I select no bleed, like I was saying, and then I go on to paper. They have tons of different types of paper, honestly more than I thought they would, but I think most art prints are on light cardstock with a satin finish. Yes, I examined very closely the art prints on my own walls and I'm pretty sure they have satin finish. It's cool because you also get this like free paper sample pack from Cat Print. You don't even have to order anything, you can just put in your address and they'll send you a sample of all their papers. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. So this is the part where I'm kind of experimenting and showing different paper types and how much they cost. So it looks like this heavy cardstock satin costs about $1 per print. So for 10, it's 10 bucks and for 20, it's 20 bucks. But I think for a lot of the paper types, or at least the light cardstock paper types, you get more of a discount the more you buy. This is how a lot of like stock making purchases go. It's cheaper if you buy in bulk. So here's a smaller one. This one's five by five. And for one, it's 10 bucks. For 20, it's $14.99. And for 50, it's like $21.99 or something like that. So yeah, buying more is always cheaper. It's kind of weird, but that's how it works. And of course, you only have to pay one shipping fee if you buy so much at once. It also comes with a bit of a risk because, you know, y what if you only sell X amount and you don't sell all of them? So let's say you're going to sell at a convention. It costs less than $22 to make 50. So each one costs about 44 cents to make. But for cat print, for some reason, shipping is always like 10 or 11 or 12 or $13. So you have to add that to your total as well. So if shipping is 15 bucks, then it costs 74 cents to make each one. So maybe you think, wow, if I sell it for $5, then I'm making, you know, a lot of money. But, my friend, what if you don't sell all 50? If you sell them for $5 each and it costs you $37 to get them, you have to sell 8 prints to make any money at all. I mean, let alone with what the booth cost you. So, in conclusion, 
math class is unfortunately very important, even and perhaps especially for artists. So now that you know it only costs about 44 cents to make a print, or at least one that's just like 5 by 5 check out that markup on Redbubble. This here is an actual screenshot of how much it cost me to make two prints for my grandma. It, it cost a lot because it was a custom size because I didn't crop my painting, but for me it was worth it to kind of check out how to use cat print, what their print quality is like, plus I was gonna buy a print for my grandma anyway. It was like a two birds with one stone situation. All right, now I'm gonna show you the final product. Okay, so this is how the final product turned out. And then I also have a print from my own little dinky photo printer. I actually think that the little photo printer did a better job with capturing the colors as I see them on the iPad. But my photo printer leaves these fun print lines, like when you look closely. And honestly, that's not really what I would expect from a professional print. So my little printer doesn't really cut it. You can't see it as well in the video as you can in real life, but trust me, they're there and they're not super great. With the cat print prints though, although the color is a little bit muted, I didn't really find any print lines. I mean, if I look really closely right here, I can like kind of see some, but you cannot see in the video and you have to look really closely with a really bright light. And even then, I'm not sure if they're real or if I'm just seeing things. Another thing that I have to mention is that the photo from my printer was printed on photo paper, so like super gloss paper, whereas the prints that I ordered from Cat Print were on satin cardstock paper, and that could have something to do with why the colors aren't as bright on the Cat Print paper as on my photo paper. In the end, I think having maybe potentially slightly muted colors compared to print lines from the printing process, I would choose slightly muted colors. I have to say though, overall it's probably cheapest in the long run if you're doing a lot of prints to get your own printer, a high-end one, and then buy paper and ink and print yourself. Cutting out the middleman always, in the end, is the cheapest, but it's not always feasible. Also, for the life of me, I can't find satin coated light cardstock paper anywhere online so I could find a price. I mean, I found Staples photo satin paper. I don't know, that ended up being 22 cents per page, but I doubt that's the cheapest you can get it for. I did like one Google search, so there's probably a lot more out there. I don't know, if you're a paper industry insider and you can give me the details for how much, paper costs for art prints, uh, definitely let me know. I have not thought this much about paper in my entire life. I feel like I'm in an episode of The Office. Okay, in summary, I hope this was good for showing you how to use a service like CatPrint or how to use CatPrint itself. I feel like that was more information than I thought that this video would contain. But I really just wanted to explain all of the options that you have, and I just hope that this is potentially useful for anybody. I mean, I guess it was useful for me in the long run because I learned as well. But I'm clearly rambling now, so I'm just gonna say I really hope you enjoyed this or found it educational, and thank you for watching. I'll see you around.